What's up guys, Peter here from Reviews on Anything. In this video we're having a look at the foldable Bluetooth keyboard by a company named Moco. Now the reason I got this is because I own a ginormous Huawei MediaPad X2 phone. Which is a 7 inch phone, or a phablet if you want to call it that way. And I find uh, it big enough to do some actual productivity work on. But obviously using the built-in keyboard uh, you know, on the screen is not much of a... A uh, good idea when you actually want to be productive. So I was looking for a keyboard and obviously I want a keyboard that is uh, You know nice and foldable and portable so I can just chuck it in my bag Have it with me all the time and work anywhere uh, So I did some uh, looking around on Amazon and came across the foldable keyboard from Moco Now this is the black version. It comes in a bunch of other colors as well uh, to suit your own personal style uh, this is the box, uh, not much to see there, uh, you know, it shows how the keyboard folds open, some descriptions on the back and all you get in here is the unit itself and a micro USB charging uh, cable and a little uh, user guide. So let's put this to the side. Alright, so let's have a look at the unit itself. As you can see, it's quite small if you um, compare it to my hands. Folded like this, it's actually only 146 by 89.6 by 16.8 millimeters. Uh, big, which is pretty hard to put in, uh, you know, context. But let's put my phone next to it. As you can see, it is actually smaller uh, than my MediaPad X2. And if you compare it to an old uh, Galaxy S2, you can see it is well, slightly bigger than that, but not by a huge margin. So it's quite, uh, you know, a small device, and it's nice and uh, portable that way. Which is good because it only weighs 184 and a half grams, so you'll hardly notice that you have this in your bag. Um, nothing to see actually around the unit. As you can see, there's a bit of a bulge back here, which is of course the rechargeable battery. I specifically wanted a rechargeable one because I never really feel like fiddling around with uh, batteries. Because when the moment comes that you have to change batteries, uh, which of course will be the moment you'll need it most, you won't have any batteries. You have to go to the store. It's all complicated. So. Rechargeable, it is through the micro USB port here on the back, um, which is good for a standby time of uh, 220 days when it's fully charged and uh, um, a usage time of 85 hours of uninterrupted work. So that's pretty impressive, but then you know it's a keyboard so it doesn't use that much power. Now, as you can see, it has two large hinges here on the sides, which is allowing the keyboard to fold open like so. Uh, and there you go, that's uh, really all there is to it, the keyboard to see. Again, to put it in perspective now, put it next to the phone again, there you go. And here with the Samsung, you can see it's quite a small keyboard. Which is nice, you know, because obviously you're not going to do extended hours of work on this. This is more sort of to be able to do work on the fly when you have, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour extra time left. Now pop your phone out pop the keyboard out and start typing. Now, um, the typing experience itself obviously is what it's all about. And as you can see, I don't exactly have small hands, not except any big hands either, but you know. Uh, and in all honesty, it is a little small on the keyboard. Uh, but that said, it is very manageable. And to give you uh, another point of perspective, here is an Apple keyboard for your, uh, you know, iMac or whatever. And as you can see, it is significantly smaller than that, uh, but not by as much as you might expect. Uh, it is a full functional keyboard, obviously, as you can tell by the function keys here and everything. Uh, and so is this. And as you can see, you know, because it's smaller, obviously the typing experience is going to be a bit more cramped. Uh, but it's certainly manageable for like half an hour or something at a time without cramping up your hands. Now, this works with all mobile operating systems, so uh, iOS. Uh, Android and even Windows phones. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, selecting these. You can maybe see it when you uh, look really close. There's actually an Android Windows and iOS button here. So after pairing it, uh, you'll have to uh, select which operating system you use. And then also, obviously, the function keys will be available to you where possible. Now, um, the keyboard itself, you know, aside for the type experience, um, it's pretty um, basic. It doesn't come with a stand, as you can see. Uh, so you still have to prop up your device somewhere, which is definitely a downside. Uh, but on the other hand, it makes the device a lot slimmer. And, you know, there's always something you can lean your device against, especially something as big as my MediaPad X2. Um, the quality itself, you know, it sits reasonably uh, well on a table. There's no 
way to change the, the incline. Uh, so you'll be stuck with a, a flat surface to type on, which again, you know, is not very nice in the long run because it's always nice to have a bit of a, a slope. Uh, but yeah, you're not going to do hours of work on here. And for 20 minutes, half an hour, that's just definitely manageable. Um, the, there's no flex in the keyboard at all. Uh, when it's uh, folded open like this, it's you know nice and uh, stiff. Obviously, you know you're not going to put any huge pressure on it because just your fingers will be resting on it. Um, and sort of stiffness is good enough. Um, and again, you know for a limited amount of time work, you'll be completely fine here. The um, design itself with the hinges here um, that might was a bit of a concern of me of mine rather, uh, that that would sort of interfere with the typing experience, but it's not bad at all because you find that the um, where your hand sort of goes up in a curve like this will be sort of arching over the hinges here, so that's not a problem at all. Downsides, um, it is a bit small, uh, the keys are a bit small, so you have to get used to the typing a little bit. Uh, and because sort of the side of the keyboard takes up Quite a lot of the buttons here take up quite a lot of space, uh, so you're really typing on sort of this part of the keyboard, uh, which makes it a bit even more cramped. Uh, so you have to get used to the placement of your fingers a little bit. So don't expect to do any sort of super rapid uh, typing on here. All in all, um, I like it. It's um, it's a very easy keyboard to use. It turns on and off automatically when you open and close it. Pairing is a breeze, uh, and you know it's a bit of an unknown manufacturer, I suppose. Uh, but they've done actually a pretty good job and for 30 euros or something on Amazon, I believe it was 35 even, I think you get a pretty decent keyboard that's easy to take with you, easy to travel with uh, and will sort of, yeah, certainly help you out for those, uh, you know, little breaks you might have uh, where you want to do some product productivity work on your phone, tablet or whatever else. Uh, so I think overall they've done a pretty decent job. Um, you know, it's, it's not the prettiest thing in the world with the big hinges here on the back. Um, but it gets the job done. Who, do, who really cares about the prettiness of your keyboard when you just want to get some typing done, right? Uh, so, you know, definitely not the best uh, solution out there. Uh, but for the price, I think you get a reasonable value for money. And the typing experience, you know, it's not the best out there. Uh, but I think it's good enough for what it is. This was Peter with a quick look at the uh, Moco Bluetooth foldable keyboard. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!